When Rosalind and I travel, we enjoy worshiping at the local churches where we stop at. And whether we worship in a multi-million dollar sanctuary or in a little one-room church, to be with Christians committed to worshiping God is good. I am intrigued with the differences in how Christians worship, and I have to admit that sometimes I struggle to get past those differences. Differences in style and type of music. Sometimes it's just the obvious wealth of the church and the, and the people that, that put this country boy at, at ill at ease. However, I relish the things we do have in common. And that's preaching from the Word of God and the Lord's Supper. Now, I really struggled in one church because the differences were really overwhelming. The practices of the clergy were foreign. They dressed strangely. They appeared to kiss every Bible and cross they came across. The music, while not unpleasant, was totally unfamiliar. And the sanctuary but it itself was a pretty much a foreign land to me. It was filled with, with weird paintings of, of people with really big eyes and various religious bric-a-brac that I had no clue, of course, what, what it meant. But in the midst of all this strangeness, I found one common thread, communion. Well, they didn't call it communion or Lord's Supper. It was called the Eucharist. But it was still there. It, in the midst of all this strangeness, even the practice itself was kind of camouflaged by some superfluous ceremonial practices. And because I was a member of a different church, I was not a member of this, uh, that particular church, I would not be considered a Christian. I would not be allowed to take communion, but there in the midst of all this, of what appeared foolish to me, communion. And watching the ritual, I thought of the beautiful simplicity of, of the first Lord's Supper that we find in Luke chapter 22. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The bread and cup, a common thread in this incredible tapestry we call Christianity. And regardless of whether it's called the Lord's Supper or Communion or the Eucharist, no matter how often it's practiced, regardless of how badly it's obscured by religious tradition, these are the two elements that remain, the bread and the cup. 1 Corinthians 11 has, For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The bread and the cup. One of the threads that binds believers across centuries, across cultures, and across denominations. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you for the privilege of being permitted to take part in this communion, this Lord's Supper, this Eucharist. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.